Well, hello, everybody. I'm Dennis Prager. Is Mr. Tubbs behind me? He is. What do you think of that, folks? We can only hope that this will continue. It's been years since the great auto days in that bed. And then what happened? Why did Otto decide not to stay in the bed in his last years? Huh. I'm sure my wife knows the answer, but she's not here to answer. Okay, everybody. Dennis Prager here. Did I say that already? I, said, I don't like saying my name twice. I'm sorry. What number is this? Three, uh, five. Three, five, one. Three, fifty, one. A few thoughts, then your questions. I love your questions, by the way. I looked at it today. When I looked at the questions, I think six different countries questions came from, which I love because I really do believe everything I have to say is not nation-based or ethnicity-based or race-based. It's, it's for people. So it doesn't matter where you live. So I am going to offer, this is a difficult subject because many people, including perhaps many of you, will have very strong feelings about this. And I respect them. But I, I, I'm so committed to thinking things through with the question of what is true or what is intellectually honest, that I, I want to deal with this question. And that is many, many people, certainly supporters of former President Donald Trump, believe that God spared President Trump in that unbelievably close call to death that he had. I mean, like a, an eighth of an inch, a quarter of an inch maximum. For those of you outside of the inch world, well, how many how many centimeters would that have been? Does anybody know? Has it been estimated? I mean, but it's a matter of centimeters, and, and he, he would have died. He would have been instantly killed, essentially. And so many people say that it was the hand of God, because had he not turned his head a little bit at that exact moment, it would have been death. It is extremely understandable why people who want him not to have been killed, and that, by the way, that could easily be people who don't even want him as president. Uh, you don't have to be a Trump supporter to be happy that he wasn't killed. It, it, it would have been a trauma in the American culture and life and lifeblood had he been killed. I mean, uh, I would I would hope the same thing would be true the other way around. I, I can't imagine that a, a, a lot of Trump supporters would be happy had his opponent with then Joe Biden, later probably Kamala Harris, would be killed. It would bring no joy to me and that's not my party. It's not my people I, want, I support. It, it would be a catastrophe to, to have a candidate for the presidency or the candidate for anything, the candidate for a local school board. <laughs> these, these are body blows to a society to have leaders assassinated. They're, they're, they're particularly terrible uh, things. So... Uh, many people are saying, inc including President Trump himself, were it not for Almighty God, I wouldn't be here today. As, as he said when he gave his acceptance speech at the Republican National Convention. So I'd like to just deal with this issue of God's intervention and offer you my thoughts on this question, because I've thought about it all of my life. It, it, it was not triggered at all by people saying that God intervened on behalf of, of Donald Trump at that moment. But I've thought about this all of my life. And my, my position is we cannot know. There are times where it really does seem to be 
divine intervention. But we can't know. We can, we can believe it. We can hope it. But we can't know it. So the most obvious reason in the case of Donald Trump, the most obvious reason is, yes, Donald Trump was saved, but this poor firefighter protecting his family, he, he was killed. So you have a very real question. Why did God intervene on behalf of person X and not person Y? And that is why I have always, all of my life, been troubled by people who were certain that God intervened on their behalf or somebody else's behalf, because the immediate question in my mind would always be, well, why not on, on all these others' behalves? It, 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 I, I thought about this when I was a child and I learned about the Holocaust. So people say, you know, prayer, your answers, your prayers will be answered, for example. Well, six million Jews' prayers weren't answered. Uh, five million Ukrainians under Stalin, their prayers weren't answered. 60 million Chinese under Mao, their prayers weren't answered. I mean, it's endless. So that's not to say, again, I'm not saying prayers are not answered. But it's clear not everybody's prayers are answered. That doesn't mean you shouldn't pray. Although I'm not a big one on asking God for things, to be honest. I am a thousand times more preoccupied in what God wants from me than I, what I want from God. I think everybody should be more preoccupied with what God wants from them, to be honest. So let me remind you at this time that the rest of the Fireside Chat is at PragerU.com. We don't trust big tech not to suppress us, so we try to have you start watching at PragerU.com, and we invite you to go there right now. There's a lot of good stuff coming up in the rest of the Fireside Chat, and start there next week. And best of all is to have the PragerU app, and that way it's really easy to start everything we produce at PragerU directly.